Well, tomorrow I'm getting some back surgery. Uh, I figured maybe I'll do a couple of videos. Maybe I'll do like one long video, stitch them all together. I'm not exactly sure yet, but I'm getting L4 and 5 spinal fusion. So um, pretty much what that means is they're going to fuse my two lowest vertebrae together because there's a problem in there. Uh, I've had a couple of back injuries and uh, the kind of stuff that I do, like the line of work that I'm in, really is not that great for taking care of your back. You know, I own a mechanic shop and fix everything. <laughs> so do all kinds of different stuff and uh, just really hard on my body and we're going to get it taken care of. It's been something that I've been hoping to not have to do for uh, quite a few years now. But anyway, we're going to go in tomorrow morning. I've got to be there at uh, 5.30 a.m. And um, we're going to have some fun. So I'll try to document the recovery and uh, the rehab and stuff like that. And maybe give people some insight if they're thinking of having this surgery or if they do have to have this surgery. Maybe some uh, just information that may not be just readily available. So I know like I'm a little bit worried about stuff and I've got questions. And you don't just really have answers or you can't get answers easily for a lot of this stuff like post recovery and things So I figured I'd go ahead and do like a video diary and uh, Yeah, just kind of document the process. So they said I'll be in the hospital for about three days and then about three weeks or so later I should be able to drive again. They've got me a back brace and also um, a bone stimulating thing kind of looks like a TENS unit uh, but what they're going to do is they're going to fuse my two lowest vertebrae together, remove the disc from between them, um, and then they're going to do a bunch of grinding all inside there. So the bone is, uh, I don't know, like fresh and raw or something, and it's supposed to stimulate uh, bone growth, and they're going to grow together. So they're going to put a couple screws in there and make like a cage, and pretty much make those two vertebrae one. And that's going to limit uh, movement, and um, should fix it up supposedly. All right, so surgery is done, and I'm laying in a bed, and my back hurts. But I guess it's a different kind of hurt. So they just moved me to a room after a recovery room, gave me a lot of uh, pain meds, and it made me really sleepy. Um, for some reason, the pain meds didn't work really well on me, so they kept having to give me a lot more than normal. So maybe I'm really sleepy. And um, I'd say the pain is probably an eight. Um, when I woke up for the first time, it hurt really bad. Probably the worst pain I've ever felt. I don't think I'd ever cried because I hurt so bad before. Um, but uh, so it's a bit better now. It's seven hours after surgery. And, oh yeah, seven hours after the actual surgery. I'm in my room for the weekend, and uh, so they put a little bag that's hooked to my back that uh, is full of blood and nasty stuff. It's going to be there for a little while until my, all my blood and nasty stuff comes out. <laughs> and um, yeah, they're going to get me a drink, and I'll have some food, and I'll do a better video when I'm more coherent. But that's how it's going. Uh, Obviously, I'm outside. This is uh, Tuesday. I had to look at my watch. It's not there. And uh, I had surgery on Friday morning. I was in the hospital uh, Saturday and Sunday, and then they sent me home yesterday about midday. Um, so I wanted to just kind of do a recap up to this point, tell everybody how I'm feeling, and uh, maybe go over a few things uh, that might help people if they're going to have this surgery done. So. The surgery, like getting the surgery done is easy. You literally just walk in there, they put an IV in you, and then you're out. After that, it's done. The hard part is everything else. So I'm sure that's kind of obvious, but um, there were a couple of medicines that they gave me or medications that they gave me as part of my medication plan or whatever that they wouldn't change. And uh, Norco or hydrocodine is one of them. It's like codeine and acetaminophen, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And that one just doesn't do a very good job for me. Um, so instead of stopping that one and starting some, something else, they gave that to me as well as a different medication. And the medication that they gave me was Dilaudin. And that 
was the best pain medicine I, I have ever had. It worked very quick. Uh, I took it through IV, but I think they also have an oral version. Uh, zero side effects. Um, I asked them if they could just give me that and stop the other medication, but they wouldn't. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's reasons for that. But it, I just wanted to mention that if you have issues with your pain medication, you know, ask for something else. Uh, I'm, I'm about to do the same thing with the muscle relaxers that they have me on also. Um, so anyway, woke up and um, realized pretty pretty quickly I'd need something different for the pain. So the Dilaudid worked really well. And um, you definitely don't you definitely don't get any sleep while you're there in the hospital. They wake you up every hour or so at least because you're needing to get medication or um, you know have things done and sign forms and all that kind of stuff. The ride home was the worst car ride I've ever had in my entire life. Um, it was so from downtown Dallas back to Midlothian. And should be like a 40 minute drive or a little bit little bit less without traffic. And uh, the GPS wasn't working in my wife's car. So we had to use her phone. And uh, yeah, it was, it was absolutely crazy. It was 100 degrees, which was a little bit uncomfortable, but, but we're all used to that here. Um, but the roads that it took us on were absolutely awful. And for someone that's had back surgery, um, trying to fit into this tiny car, she drove, drives a Ford Fusion, but probably should have took my truck. Um, I couldn't get in or out of the vehicle, but then on top of that, it was so small inside. So that was not enjoyable. So I would say definitely um, have a very big, comfortable vehicle. If you're worried about getting in and out, I wouldn't worry about it. There's doctors there that will help you with that. Um, just worry about a good car ride, especially if you have far to go. So uh, definitely would not recommend your wife's commuter car. But we got home, got settled in. And um, the first day I made, it, I made a mistake of not taking all my medication. I really wanted to be done with it because right before we left the hospital, uh, I started throwing up, which as you can imagine with a back surgery is pretty, uh, pretty uncomfortable. It was very, it was very, very terrible. And I don't know if it was medications at the wrong time. I don't know uh, if I was moving too early or maybe eating too much too quickly. But anyway, that was one thing I really wanted to avoid, and I, I felt like the medication was not helping. Um, so the first day I tried to, I skipped my muscle relaxers completely, and um, I took a few extra hours in between my pain medicine, which at this point is the oral uh, Norco again. So that was kind of a, having to play catch up on that. It really didn't make for a great day. Uh, but once I was caught up, you know, there's a couple hours a day where I feel really good. And it's kind of when all the, med the medication kind of overlaps. It's during the day, about right now, like mid-morning. Right now I think it's about 10 o'clock. And I can actually get outside and enjoy the weather. Feels really nice outside. And uh, hang out with the puppy and just kind of do what I love to do anyway. But anyway, once I got back on medicine schedule, everything was, you know, seemed to be like it was better. One thing that I can recommend is, if possible, uh, sleep in a bed, and that way you can sleep on your left side, your back, and your right side, and you can alternate. Um, my back is getting really sore from where they have the bandages, and I haven't re replaced them yet. I think that's coming tonight. I think I'll do um, a shower tonight and we'll replace the dressing or whatever. But anyway, um, if you have three different ways or multiple different ways you can sleep, you can take a lot of that stress off of your skin. So from sitting in the same spot for a long period of time uh, really gets miserable. So I would sleep on my left side and I would put a pillow in between my knees and then I would sleep on my back and then I would do the right side. And I think that's something, something that's helped me uh, be able to have a little bit of variation in how I'm sleeping. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much... Um, I mean, family's great. I have family that lives close by. They've been willing to come bring me meals and things like that, uh, which is just amazing, if anything, more for my family than for me because I'm not around to help them and take care of them, you know. My wife is having to do everything. Uh, so that's really nice. But, yeah, I'll probably do I'll do, do another update. I'll probably wait till tomorrow because I've got some things going on, like I said, changing the dressing and stuff like that that I'm not sure how it's going to go, and I want to do a video after that. So I might have some advice, but uh, 
stay on your medicine, you know, when you're supposed to. Ask for a change if possible. Um, and uh, don't eat too quick. Try to just eat, you know, if you need to, take 10 minutes to eat that meal or more. Uh, just take it really easy. But I'll see you guys soon. Okay, it's Wednesday. Uh, my surgery was last Friday morning. So doing another update for today. Uh, I do my updates in the morning because that's when I feel the best. <laughs> I've got the most uh, energy in the morning. I'm usually ready to get out of the bed. I've been up for a little bit, you know, and just ready to get my day started. So, uh, like I said before, I, I think I said I get up at early, wake it, wake the kids up, get them ready for school. Uh, it takes me a minute to kind of hobble around and get warmed up, but I like to try to be there in the morning to see them off, help them with breakfast and things. Um, so that's done. All the kids are at school. Veronica is working from home, but right now she is actually at the store picking up a prescription. Uh, we got that pain medicine fiasco sorted out um, with like wrong quantities and all that kind of stuff going on. So luckily we have a local pharmacy that understands that I'm not just a druggie, but I had spinal surgery. Kind of need some medicine. So, uh, and speaking of medicine, today's goal is poop. Today's goal is uh, it would be really great to go to the restroom. Um, so I've got stool softeners I've been taking, and then I also got a laxative. It's called Senna S. I really don't know a lot about medic medications, but I figured I'd uh, put the name out there so if you guys know what it is, whatever. But anyway, that's the one I'm going to try. And um, also taking some like gas uh, pills to help with uh, farting. So normally um, you can just shoot one out anytime, make the kids laugh, but not recently. It's been a little difficult, like maybe once a day, and that's not good. You can really feel the pressure, um, especially like if I have to pee, I can really feel that there's a lot of gas in there. So, um, but yeah, so that's the medication update. Um, how my mornings are going is I wake up, like I said, take, get the kids ready for school, and then I go outside and uh, try to read for a little bit and hang out with the pup. There's been some birds that are really bothering me, so I think I'm going to try to shoot a bird today. Um, so Toby will be excited about that. Um, and then I'm about to go out in the garage here and work on a small project. So I've got to make, uh, I've got a long, uh, heavy wire gauge extension cord that I use to run the camper when it's here at the house. And I've got someone that wants to come by uh, my pop-up camper. So I need to redo the cable ends on it. So it's been, it sat out, sat outside for a little while while we were moving. Um, and I want to replace the receptacle um, and also probably the plug-in if I have one. So anyway, I'm going to get those replaced so I can plug the camper in. That way those people can come look. And I'm not going to be able to show them the camper or really help them with anything, but my dad's going to come by so they can take a look at it. Um, it's one of those things. I like the camper a lot, but uh, trying to be real, you know, and a pop-up camper is not something that I should be doing um, probably in the next year or so, you know. I need to stick with the hard side and do things that are a little bit easier on my body. Um, but yeah, so Veronica's going to be working from home today. I'm going to be hanging out, uh, trying to sneak around and do some projects when I can and um, getting some rest, trying to poop. So if there's another video I can do today, then I will. I may take you guys out in the shop so you can go see what I'm working on out there. It's day six since back surgery. You can see that I'm obviously standing up and I'm out in the shop. Uh, if, you're, if you've seen any of my videos, you'll notice it's super quiet in my shop today. It's because of the uh, cryptocurrency called Ethereum. Uh, there was a merge today is what they call it and now uh, ethereum is no longer mineable so all my mining rigs are quiet sitting around it's actually super peaceful out here um but anyway as far as the uh, surgery stuff updates i can walk around without the walker uh, i shouldn't do that but i can and um, i can get around really easily um right now the only real difference is i, I can definitely feel pain from my skin so I'm guessing like the cuts and things like that more than the internal pain sometimes. As long as I'm on my pain medicine. If I, uh, like right when it's about time to take pain medicine again, I definitely feel some, you know, internal achiness. Getting up and getting out of bed and things like that. Um, the hardest thing for me the past couple days has been sitting. I can't sit hardly at all. I have to either be standing, like with the walker, or laying down. So, um... I'm hoping I can find a, a back brace that 
will help me sit a little bit better. The one that I've got that was given to me by the doctors is uh, really, really stiff and extremely uncomfortable. So um, I know it's necessary for walking around and things, but I'm hoping I can find a back brace that will be a lot more comfortable that I can sit in. Because there's things I want to go do here pretty soon, like uh, both my youngest boys uh, start t-ball, or one starts t-ball, one starts baseball. I want to be able to go sit in the stands, for example. I can't just stand there on a walker for over an hour. Um, but let's see, no, no bowel movements or anything yet. Uh, so I, I wanted to try to stay ahead of things like that as far as constipation. Uh, opiate constipation is a big deal. For me, it really affects me. Some people, maybe not as much. Uh, so I've been taking stool softeners since day one um, that I was released, at least so Sunday. Um, they may have even given me some in the hospital. I don't know. But I've been able to pass gas. It's difficult. It's not like easy like it used to be. But I can pass gas. I've been taking uh, like gas X tabs. It's like whichever one you take like two of by mouth and you swallow the pills. So I've been taking those and I've been taking three stool softeners a day just once with each meal. Um, and then I started also um, the, what's it called, laxative that I mentioned previously. So I was trying all that. I really kind of wanted to have a bowel movement this week just to, so I can stay ahead of any problems. I don't want to have to go back and deal with constipation issues. Um, so I went ahead and I bought some suppositories also. Hopefully I don't have to use those, uh, but we'll give it a shot if we have to. I just got like glycerin suppositories. It's the simplest, like easiest thing supposedly that you can get. Um, so I don't know. We'll see if we need to give that a try. I'll let you guys know. I know it's not super uh, fun to talk about, but just a realistic update on what's going on. Um, I don't wear pants. I don't wear pants. Uh, <laughs> I haven't worn pants uh, in a, quite a while because <clears throat> with the back brace and stuff, it, wearing pants makes it even harder. So I just walk around in my underwear. But it's been good. It's been good. Um, I can't really say there's been any other complications so far. That's why I kind of skipped my update for yesterday on day five. There wasn't really a whole lot of need. I was just really kind of going through stuff and um, moving forward. So I'll keep doing updates. They may not be every day, but we'll probably space them out. Maybe I'll even separate it into a different video. I don't know. Um, but if you have any questions, definitely put them down in the comments. And I'm sure I can answer any questions on things that I've definitely probably forgotten to talk about. But uh, I guess we'll we'll see you soon. It's officially been one week, a little over a week. It's uh, Friday at 2 o'clock, and I had my back surgery uh, Friday at 7 a.m. Uh, last week. So it's been seven full days, and this will end this uh, video here. And we'll continue to do stuff. I'll definitely let you know how everything progresses and updates and how the recovery goes in the future. Um, so... Every day was probably 100% better than the one before, after about the first three days. The first three days were probably the worst pain of my entire life. Worst pain that I have ever gone through, and it was absolutely miserable. Uh, but after that, it just seemed like my recovery was moving at light speed. Today, I'm walking around uh, like normal. I'm still using my walker and my brace, you know, most of the time. But uh, taking a break from here and there just to kind of let my skin and stuff like that rest. And when I say 100% each day, what, it, what I mean in, in that is like ability and uh, range of motion. Like things that I can do. Um, like example today, I'm walking around without my walker and without my brace on. Um, so like every day it just seems like I can do a lot more things, do things at different angles. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm like twisting and bending and lifting really more or anything like that. But just doing regular day-to-day -to -day tasks. There's so many things I've been able to, to just do and feel like I could do that I know for sure I couldn't do, you know, days before in the surgery. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about like physical stuff. So um, there's an incision on my back that I'll put some pictures of. It's not like super gross or anything, don't worry, it still has like cover on it. But um, there's an incision on my back, like just a line, and then there's a small hole on the side of my back. And that's where they had a drain tube at. So while I was in the hospital, they had to drain this little like ball of like blood and stuff um, a few times a day. It wasn't like all the time, really. I didn't have any excessive bleeding problems or anything like that. So there was a little like ball hooked up to me, and they drained that a few times a day. 
and then um, they changed my wound dressing um, once while I was there. So I think it was probably on Saturday they changed my, my wound dressing there. And then when I got home, um, I waited until Tuesday and I took my first shower and uh, left all the dressing and stuff like that on, took a shower, got clean, and then um, patted everything dry back there. And then once everything got dry, my wife changed out the bandages. So she put new adhesive uh, bandages on there and uh, no like Neosporin or antibiotics or anything like that. And then I showered again on Thursday. So um, just, I don't really get a, really dirty while I'm walking around doing nothing. Um, but I also like really like to take showers. I don't like being dirty. I don't like going to bed without showering. So every other day is as much as I can push it really. And uh, those bandages, the size that you need, aren't very cheap. So uh, they gave me a few from the hospital. I'll end up going to buy a bunch more, I'm sure. Um, and then just let that ride, keep doing that pretty much until there's little things called, they call Steri strips that you'll see in the pictures that I posted. And those, once they fall off by themselves, it's pretty much it. You're done after that. Uh, you shower just like normal. You don't have to use any kind of special soaps. Um, after a couple days, I was able to feel more the skin pain than a lot of the internal, I guess what you would call bone pain. It's definitely still there, but I could feel the skin pain a lot, like maybe the actual cuts and things. I could feel them kind of stretching and moving. Probably have to has to do with how active I am. I'm up for several hours a day. Uh, they wanted me to be up for 30 minutes a day, and it, I definitely blow way past that with walking around. Um, so, like, for example, today I walked um, an eighth of a mile out on the on the road. So I definitely, I mean, I had to take a break after that, that's for sure. But um, getting up and moving around, I think, is one of the biggest things that sped up my recovery. In the hospital, I got up to pee every time instead of peeing, like, in the bed in, like, a urinal thing they wanted me to use. So every single time I had to, I, I had to pee... I had to get up, which was a pain. I had to call the nurse every time. But I tell you what, getting up and doing stuff like that is the key to recovering quickly. The worst thing you can do is sit around in a bed. Um, this isn't the only surgery I've had, but I can tell you that for sure. Um, so it's the hardest thing to do, but it's the thing that's going to get you up and moving the quickest and get you off pain medicine and drugs and things. Um, one thing that I'm still waiting on seven days later is a poop. I haven't had a poop yet. So uh, they said it could be at least five days before that happens. Uh, I told you guys I've been trying to be proactive, taking a stool softener with each meal, and then um, also started laxatives two days ago, taking two little laxative pill things. So, um, and then I did do, I told you guys I was going to try suppositories. I did that. I tried the glycerin suppository. I tried one yesterday, and then I tried one today. And um, yeah, it didn't really work. I guess I won't go into details, <laughs> but uh, didn't do like really what it was supposed to do. It's like a little, looks like a tiny little candle that goes in your butt, and uh, then it just kind of like liquefies, and that's that's what came out instead of poop. So we'll see how it goes. I'm not feeling like super terrible or anything like that in the stomach, but that is a pretty important part of it. I would say a very important part for people who are affected by any kind of opiates, um, like any kind of heavy pain medicine. If you get constipation at all, really make sure you're on top of it. Talk to your doctor, figure out what's best. Let them know ahead of time that you're concerned about possible constipation. Uh, my wife yesterday bought me a soft brace so I can sit in the car a lot easier. The big uh, hard brace that they gave me, uh, the doctor's office is just not the most comfortable for, well, you can't, almost can't sit in it at all. But anyway, um, so I got that going and I'm uh, gonna start moving around. I've started weaning myself off of pain medicine. Um, I'm not suggesting that you do that. I'm not for or against anything that I tell you in these videos. The back surgery, any of the medication, any of it. I just want to give you, you know, results and let you know what's happening in my life. So uh, the muscle relaxers, I think I said I already I quit them day one. They were just really throwing me off super weird. I couldn't sleep. I was having terrible dreams. I was, uh, I don't know that I could say hallucinating because I've never taken anything like kind of drugs that would do that kind of thing. But I was seeing things and hearing things that weren't real. Um, and it was just scary. I didn't like it. So I quit the muscle relaxers first thing. Um, and I'm starting to wean myself off starting last night of, of uh, pain medicine. So I'm supposed to take two pills of Norco, which is hydrocodone and acetaminophen. And uh, last night I started weaning down to one. So um, the main reason I'm doing that is I don't want to build any kind of dependency on medication. 
And two is the second one is constipation. I'm just worried that I'm going to have uh, long-term problems. I don't want to take this stuff for three solid weeks, which they want me to, at least three weeks. Um, so I'm hoping by next week I should be off of it. We'll see how it goes. I think I've got a pretty good pain tolerance for this kind of stuff. I mean, I've been having uh, chronic, like major, major back problems for 15 years. And since about 2019, had problems sleeping even. It's the main reason we took the surgery on. So um, I will tell you that this past week, at least the past four or five days, um, have been the happiest days that I've had since at least 2019. And um, on paper, it doesn't really make sense. You know, um, past seven days have been like a pain level eight, you know? So it's kind of hard and kind of weird to understand that, you know, I'm, I'm happier than I have been since about 2019 um, when my pain level has been the highest. Uh, and I'll tell you what it is, is hope. To be totally honest, I've really got hope um, in my heart every day I wake up just feeling happy in a lot of pain, but just um, like I've got hope now. So in 2019, I started having some my worst back problems that I had ever had before. Trouble where I couldn't sleep. And I tell you what, not being able to sleep is the worst kind of pain you can ever imagine. It's worse than physical pain. It's just so mentally um, taxing. It takes everything out of you and just uh, makes everything fun. I mean, <laughs> makes everything fun. It makes everything not fun. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just I wouldn't ever wish it on anybody. And so having, having hope, I think, is what is really driving me forward. I wake up every day excited. I have just been in super great mood all week, even though my pain is just, I mean, really, really high. And, you know, I can't do anything. So um, I've also got more people right now praying for me than I think I've ever had in my life. So uh, I'm a Christian. I believe in God. I believe Jesus is the way you get to heaven. And um, I really think probably the biggest impact on my uh, life, uh, feeling, experience, and happiness is God right now. You know, I've had a lot of time to reflect, a lot of time to pray and read. And um, I read, read the Bible pretty regularly anyway. I'm involved in church and things like that. But I'll say... You know, when you have a whole lot uh, that's kind of taken away from you and you can't do stuff, um, being able to fall back on, you know, my core beliefs and things has really helped me out. So that's one thing that I'll say. Uh, as a Christian, as someone that believes in God and tries to walk the right path the best that I can, um, it's really been a great, uh, a great force to help me move forward. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Thanks for watching.